Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So, guys, we hope everybody is doing well out there. Please do subscribe. Have that little little bell clicked for both Evolutionary Energy Arts, which tomorrow gets out of a timeout chair. As you know, they say, go sit in the corner, young man. Think about what you have done. Yes. Well, we always think about what we do. And so, you know, again, when you're faced with, what can you say? Tyranny, you do what you got to do. And also EE Arts, as both of them have unique videos. There's a video that we're going to be putting up, which I normally would throw up on Evolutionary, that we're going to throw up on just Brightian, uh, Rumble, and e and BitChute. So that'll be going up probably a little bit later today. But we did want to touch on some things. As you can see here, um, Yellowstone. Yes, Yellowstone. Uh, the, the, this road is just trashed. Absolutely trashed. All Yellowstone entrances temporarily closed due to heavy flooding, rock slides, extremely hazardous conditions. And this is from uh, a local 8 News. And just, you know, holy cow, this, this is just trashed. I mean, the road is just gone in many sections from this flooding. Uh, and this is in Montana. There's actually a town that has 900 people in it that's completely cut off at the moment. And I know the uh, the inclement weather has been going on. It's affecting uh, Idaho and other areas nearby as well. Beautiful, rugged country. Um, I don't know. Did I ever ask you, have you ever been to Yellowstone? Mm -hmm. Actually, I, I have been and I drove through it, I think, twice. Twice. I drove through it once with someone and then once on my own. And it is breathtaking unreal beautiful serene oh it's the best time ever of course we know yellowstone is a super volcano and in fact it's perhaps you know one of the most potentially deadly uh super volcanoes on earth now we've never got that it would go off in that sense in our lifetime as far as like a, one of those massive super eruptions that would just mean life would not be possible in North America. Um, but you never know. It is possible there could be some other activity. There could be some smaller um, eruptions or other types of quakes that, that could happen as the Earth is definitely going into a more active phase. And one of the things that we've got from the guides is that you know, we've been watching a lot of augmented, uh, artificially flavored, uh, enhanced, you know, <laughs> events, kind of like taking what Mother Nature is is doing and putting it on steroids. But Mother Nature is going to be acting up more. And that's something that we have gotten from the guides that Mother Nature is waking up and we will see more uh, big legitimate uh, earth changes mm -hmm. D definitely well when it comes to this one though and when I when I took a look energetically uh, I got a very dark feeling a dark vision a dark energy so I, I don't think that this is completely um, mother on her own having this reaction and there was actually two parts of the information that Mike picked up too and I don't know if we can talk about it on this one but we both came up with something and together that has a, a more clear picture. So, yeah. Well, you know, I've shared with you guys, you know, the visions that I've gotten uh, over the years, which really for me started all the way back in the wonderful year of 1984. Uh, yes, the hair bands and all the good stuff from the 80s. But that was when I first um, had this, it was like three in a row visions of uh, the U.S. basically, not just the U.S. being invaded in a Red Dawn scenario, um, but other things going on as well. I, I saw, and I did do a video in January of 2018 that shared that, uh, everything that that came to me i saw us being monitored and watched by what i didn't understand at that time uh which now could obviously be drones everywhere every every single move uh, was monitored and watched by these eyes that were everywhere 
And then I also saw these what felt like natural disaster events that weren't natural disaster events is the best way to put it. You know, they felt like they were not necessarily natural, but they looked like they were natural events uh, that at one point in time. And this this was something that was more recent, I'd say three years ago. Uh, I remember waking up and saying to Cindy th- about three years ago, you know, I just dreamed that I was telling you, I can't believe that in the morning when we wake up, there will be foreign troops on U.S. soil. And it was something like we knew they were coming. Now, this was unrelated to um, the war and a Red Dawn style. It was not a Red Dawn style event. It was more like troops were being sent in for some other reason, perhaps to help with some sort of natural disaster that had occurred that maybe wasn't a natural disaster. And, um, you know, that's what this kind of feels like. And it might not be Yellowstone. It it could be absolutely the New Madrid when it goes. And and I do think that that will probably go. I I just got to feel that that's going to go in the next, uh, you know, maybe three years or so. And leading up to that, I would not be surprised with San Andreas and Cascadia being where all this really starts off. I've I've always felt that that's where it's going to start off with Cascadia, and then roll and that the Cascadian event and San Andreas might happen, you know, simultaneously almost or or very closely together. And then the energy, uh, thanks to everything that Dutch has taught us over the years Dutch sense uh, the way the energy would would flow would be towards uh, you know this area and then the New Madrid after that so anyway it, it just has a, a very uh, dark vibe to it somebody else had mentioned too that that CERN uh, the big one the mother CERN as there's probably baby CERNs in many many different locations just like when we talk about harp uh, there's harps all over the place now, all around the globe. Uh, but somebody had said that they had added on to it and made it much larger. And, you know, <clears throat> there's so much that's going on right now. Tens and tens of thousands of satellites in the sky with technologies that people aren't told what they're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the way things are being written now, it, it's like you can't really come up with too many other explanations besides they have something planned and then somebody else might need to step in to assist absolutely and so we've been watching wildfires in uh, new mexico and we have thousands ordered to evacuate as the pipeline fire grows near flagstaff arizona Um, absolutely one of our favorite places we we both love flagstaff uh, if it was a little bit more affordable, we might be in somewhere around that Flagstaff area right now. It's just that it was, uh, we were looking for, for some land in that area, even though obviously drought, wildfires, uh, what have you, just um, really love the area. It's beautiful, so beautiful there. But at least 2,200 households near Flagstaff were ordered to evacuate Monday on the 13th due to threats posed by the growing pipeline fire. And there was a person that was um, arrested with this, a 57-year-old male arrested by Forest Service law enforcement officers in connection with the wildfire charged with natural resource violations. Hmm, interesting. You know, again, we have so much going on in preparation. Now, it could have been just plain old negligence. Maybe he had a few too many beers, let the campfire get out of control could be that simple or it could be something a little bit more diabolical as well Mm -hmm. usually it's the latter so in case you didn't know there's a run on chinese banks and it's being ignored by the world and well there's a lot that doesn't get out of china that's just a fact you know it's 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 kind of like an iron curtain over there you know we see these little blips you know these little things on uh twitter here and there, there was another one uh, today about showing how a guy just, you know, an elderly man crossing the road just face plants again and wondering what's up. But, I mean, we've seen so many of these. We've seen people getting 
barricaded into their buildings, you know, doors welded shut. We we see, you know, sterilization crews out scrubbing streets and, you know, it, it's just, it's just, it's just a place I think that most of us are just so thankful that we're not there. But as far as this economic situation, now again, there's, there's so much going on covertly and when we look at the situation that has developed, remember the the ruble is rubbish. Uh, uh, no, actually, <laughs> boy, I mean, why don't we see people bringing up that statement more? Uh, that statement forty six made because it it couldn't be any more untrue. That was a brief blip. So when we see this, you know, you got to wonder how bad is it, and how. How is this going to play out? And there was another person that commented and said, remember, we're not going to see a, one ginormous collapse because they're, they're going to do it in segments so as to keep the panic at a minimum and because they don't want to trigger something where overnight you have this societal global revolution going on because you know people catch on. And, and that I can agree with that. You know, they... They're so close to being caught out, but yet there's so many that are sleepwalking at the same time. It, they are, and, and it's really unfortunate. And this is a time where all the information that is incoming, you have to question, you know, okay, wh why are we seeing this? What is its purpose? And then analyze it from 10 different perspectives, and it's all to just keep the confusion. So bank runs, you know, the 1930s, Great Depression, that's what comes to mind for many people. And we did have runs on some U.S. banks back in 2008 when we had that crisis. The crisis that's coming is going to make 2008 look like nothing, like a, a one day at band camp. Yeah. Oh, oh, uh -oh. Uh oh, you guys remember that one? What was that movie? <laughs> you remember? In Asia, bank runs have been rare. A run on Japanese banks in 1927 led to the collapse of dozens of institutions across the country. There was a banking crisis in Myanmar in 2003, which the country has never fully recovered from. Perhaps since the Great Depression, none has been as significant compared to what is seeming to unfold in China right now. In recent years, it's become clear the Chinese people are losing faith in their financial institutions. There's been anger over, obviously, the lockdowns. And we saw that in Shanghai. And the collapse of China's Evergrande saw rare public demonstrations as residents face the prospect of losing their life savings used as deposits for housing. Return our money, the protesters chanted. The songbook is eerily similar to what's happening at branches in a number of China's rural provinces right now. Multiple sources contacted by Asia markets have confirmed deposits at the following six banks have been frozen since mid-April. So two months. And it gives a list of these six banks where, again, it's they've been frozen for two months. Hmm... Interesting, interesting, is it not? But when we look at what's going on globally, it feels like we are awfully close to that collapse. Wholesale prices rose 10.8% in May, near a record annual pace. I always find it, it's, it's funny too, there's so much spam when it comes to, uh, especially like Bitcoin and different investments. And we'll see, all of a sudden there'll be like a chain of 20 little uh, messages which are probably all completely bought no humans besides the first one that just inserts this fake conversation about some investor that we've never heard of maybe you guys have we just don't pay a lot of attention to it we're looking forward to the day when this whole system is completely gone completely gone and you know we're doing things in a simpler way we're you know, there's no more middlemen to basically bleed the individual dry. So we see the producer price index rose eight tenths of a percent for the month, 10.8 percent over the past year. It was in line with estimates and the annual gain was slightly off the record 11.5 hit earlier uh, in the year. And here we see this is from Zero Hedge. The market is on the edge of a huge collapse. 
And I think we can see it. And we look over to Japan and we see Japan on the verge of systemic collapse. Dramatic, unpredictable non-linearities in financial markets. So what's that going to look like? Well, we might not have to wait long. You know, I, I think it's I think the chances are, are very good. This this will be the year that we see uh, the beginning of the crumbling of this whole thing. Coinbase lays off 18 percent of workforce as executives prepare for recession and crypto winter crypto winter i i understand and i think you can make money if you're very very savvy on on the crypto if you know exactly when to buy and sell i, I wouldn't stay in it forever because i don't think it's going to be there forever the only crypto i think that's going to honestly be there will be the one that the nwo puts out no other i really don't see it i mean and i'm just sharing with you my feelings because i'm not an expert on this but to me that's really what i think so i mean you might be able to make make makes make a killing some people have made a killing but it's it's certainly a russian roulette in my mind mm -hmm. i know i mean if you can do a thing where you're jump in and jump out and do a really good job of that and that could lead to a lot of favor but what about what would happen if like all the computers crashed if there was a huge a, a huge hacking in a way you know how is all of this going to be confirmed yeah what if the grid goes down for six months as as you know was given to us by the government several years ago talking about you know hey you gotta be prepared for it then what you gonna do you know it just to me it just doesn't make any sense but i think it's also um there there is this mindset that we're going to come out of things in like a layer by layer type thing like the white hats are pushing back and they're taking this okay they've taken over this one underground base and you know so and so has you know <laughs> been taken out or that's not really them uh i think there's a lot of that going on and i feel like it's very very dangerous uh because again i feel like it plays into these expectations of things that that I, I don't think are too likely to come about and and again we want to always hope for the best but prepare for the worst and be ready for the worst be be ready f to be again as independent as you can be outside of the system and you know again you just the like how that feels like russian roulette it's it's just like walking into a vegas casino and feeling lucky how lucky do you feel when do you know when the house is going to actually you know pull that ace from its sleeve mm -hmm. and you know the house never puts itself in a position where it might lose ever absolutely and that's what you got going on here and even as we're going to take a look towards the end um they will make it look bad for themselves where they can in order to again advance that that bigger bigger picture goal Property values are falling across the U.S. and Europe because uh, of the inflation. So, you know, that super hot housing market, yeah, that bubble is starting to starting to uh, deflate some. And I've noticed, you know, a lot more um, properties coming online and some that are actually extremely attractive and look like good values. But, you know, they might not be good value in six months. Mm -hmm. But then again, the hyperinflation. This is this is a tough, complicated time, guys. It really, really is. So in our dealings with David Debine, who I always would have to defer to him on anything economic because I feel that he's you know very, very learned individual. Um, he's he's all about having the things that are going to keep you afloat. So food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> seeds, um, things like that are going to be so valuable as as society starts collapsing in 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 these apparent waves what's going to be valuable well think about all the people that haven't um been prepping in any particular way maybe now they're going to start to buy you know four cans of something instead of two or three yeah, that's the, their idea of prepping um it's going to be all the things that are basics 
really basics and the basics will include things like seeds organic seeds heirloom seeds things along those lines they could end up being valuable currency even just organic soil i mean we think about what we had to do in the desert to try to grow stuff holy cow well look at the american west so much of it it doesn't have soil that you could just go plop out your crops into you're gonna have to work that as as we know with the whole fertilizer issues going on and the water issues well right now it's so important to be working on your own soil because it does take time to build up if you don't have easy access to fertilizer and it just seems like there's a lot of um, accidents happening when it comes to fertilizer so hyperinflation is without a doubt making its way into private real estate the bidding pools are becoming thinner before you know people were getting 10 20 percent more than the listing price right away all this is going to change all this is going to change but then again you know there are going to be some some properties that are going to be super valuable especially the ones where you can actually you know subsist on your own now we we had talked about the world's riches gaining record wealth with the whole plague upon the land and now we see they've lost 1.4 trillion in 2022 after the rapid gains. And it's a stark contrast to last year when soaring markets boosted the world's population of high net worth individuals by about 8%, including 13% in North America. The 500 wealthiest people in the world have lost a combined 1.4 trillion this year, including 206 billion on Monday alone. And, you know, I don't think a lot of us are going to cry for them. Not at all. Oh, poor Elon. What are you going to do, Elon? Oh, uh, we, we know. He's, he's, he's got Draco friends. And, you know, it, they're all set. They understand. The ones at the top, they understand the ebb and the flow. They understand the roller coaster. They understand the drama. They understand the script. Indeed, they do. So we have dozens injured in Iran as we have an, another explosion at a chemical factory and they're coming right out and saying, yeah, this, this was basically done on purpose. It might very well be Israel. And I was just thinking, boy, it, it might not be too long before Israel and, and Iran are just basically in a state of outright war. And the way Russia has warned Israel about doing things in other countries like Syria, for instance, or Lebanon. Um, it does feel like this time will be different. And, of course, then you have all those people that are waiting for Ezekiel 38 to happen. India's air pollution is so bad it's taking 10 years off a of life expectancy over in Delhi. That's bad. It is. That's really, really unfortunate. And just shows to you what they're doing to us in mass. Absolutely. It's the system that is the problem. Russia has become India's second largest oil uh, supplier. And it's interesting, too, because they're getting paid in rubles and they're getting paid in gold. And, yeah, th their currency is getting very stable and their oil industry is thriving. As we had said before, 46 said, yeah, they're going to pay. The ruble is rubbish. Rubbish. I think that's what he said. Yep. Something like that. Well, you know what? <laughs> All you could do is laugh at anything that's that he says. Anything. Or cry, depending on you know how you are taking it. Mm -hmm. Well, he's proven that if you just do exactly opposite of what they say, <coughs> things will go well. Yeah, and and his new um well, the girl that took over Jen Psaki's spot, I forget what her name is again, but she tweeted out uh, a tweet to say, yes, 46 is planning on running, you know, next next go round 2024. And I happened to respond, yeah, the only running he's doing is to the John. <laughs> That's adorable. <laughs> I guess it depends. I love it. That's yeah. So when we look at the fleet tracker, now we see movement. And we actually see there's two less carrier strike groups in the Pacific. So this hits me as curious, too. Um, it, it's interesting. Okay, so we still have the Harry S. Truman sitting in the Mediterranean. It's parked there. And now we have the Kearsarge. That's been parked there, too. And, and now there's going to be a new um, operation going on in the Baltic. 
another uh, NATO wargaming. It's just basically keeping this here uh, kind of indefinitely. These two are basically holding indefinite. And it's interesting though, because now this, this becomes slightly light over here. So if China did move on Taiwan at this point in time, you know, um, you gotta just wonder, put a little question mark in your mind there. Um, yeah, we'll watch this. But then again, we know it, it, it's, it's going to be a new saying. Remember Austin Powers, who does number two work for? Who does number 46 work for? And we see Xi signs, outlines that direct China's military operations other than war. Now this, I saw this yesterday and it hit me as odd. I didn't get anything really more coming in on this, but it does feel... If I sense this out, it feels to me that this is preparatory um, f for some other, another piece to the puzzle, another part of this of this process that's underway. Perhaps, um, well, let me read this to you guys so you can see. The outlines will standardize and provide legal basis for Chinese troops to carry out missions like disaster relief, humanitarian aid, Escort and peacekeeping and safeguard China's national sovereignty, security, and development is interests, experts say. The outline aims to prevent and neutralize risks and challenges, handle emergencies, protect people and property, safeguard national sovereignty, security, and development interests, and world peace and regional stability. The outlines have important meanings for the Chinese armed forces to carry out their duties and missions in the new era, in the new era, as they will make innovations in ways military forces are used and standardize the organization and implementation of the armed forces military operatives other than war. Military operations other than war refer to operations that do not involve war, like disaster relief, humanitarian aid, as well as operations that limit the scale of the use of force, like maritime escorts and peacekeeping. Now, that was said uh, anonymously on to, uh, to the Global Times on Monday. So, obviously, you know, one of the things you might think of is is just basically anything that happens with an uprising within the country with any more types of lockdowns we look a little bit further into the article and they start talking about uh escort missions in the gulf of aden the waters off somalia you know there's pirates in those waters off of somalia as well as un peacekeeping missions Hmm, now that's starting to feel like something to me. Mm -hmm. Yep, it definitely feels like they're gearing toward stepping in and helping us for some one reason or another. Yeah, so who will that us be, you know? And, uh, you know, there was an, um, a movie that Netflix put out that really, really hit me because it was so much like what I had seen back in 1984. And it's called How, How It Ends, I yes. think, right? Yes. It it, it, How It Ends. We, we watched it three times because, boy, it did, that felt like, uh, I felt like I was watching m my old vision, you know, from, you know, 30 years ago happen, 28 years ago. So interesting. Peacekeeping, UN missions, humanitarian aid, disaster relief. Yeah, this this feels like something to me. Mm -hmm. Definitely feels um, extremely developmental. Absolutely. So we want to thank you guys for your support on Patreon and also on Ko-Fi where you could do a one-time donation or you could do monthly support just like Patreon. Uh, we couldn't do it without your support over there. Be prepared and again, keep, keep working towards that independence that being able to live outside of the system as much as possible obviously it's going to have to come in stages for most people but do whatever you can work together as always god bless and namaste namaste